in Division I men's basketball. Our officiating crew, Guy Pagano, Mamadou Ba, and Tommy Deneen here from Levitis Pavilion on a Friday night. A lot of Army fans in attendance with the big game tomorrow against the Mids. Should be a fun atmosphere for the first matchup between these two programs since 2009. Black Knights and Abe Johnson. This is Curry. Shot clock down to six on the first possession of the game. Into the hands of Scovins in the lane. He's bothered by Akpara, who grabs the loose ball. This should be a great matchup tonight to watch between number four Scovins and number 10 Akpara. Very similar players. There goes Akpara. He's denied by Johnson. Abe Johnson, six foot eight forward from Missoula, Montana. See right here, number 10, Akpara taking it hard to the basket. I mean, seriously, if you look at him and number four, Scovins, these guys are mirror images of each other. And a takeaway, TJ Small goes to the rack, left it short. Johnson gets it underneath the cylinder and scores. Two possessions in a row right there that the Black Knights are trying to go inside number 54, Johnson. That time he delivers. One thing that Tommy Amaker really preached to his team after the game against Loyola Chicago was discipline on defense. Really feels like that is where it all starts for his team. Of course, missing Justice Ajibor. That's a big defender out as this one goes off the fingertips of Lesmond, and it's turned over by the Crimson on back-to-back -back possessions. Yeah, it's been a big storyline without Mr. Justice Ajibor out there, one of the elite shot blockers, not only in the Ivy, but in the country. That presence down low is opening up a lot of at-the-basket opportunities for uh, Harvard opponents. And Tommy Amaker says he erases a lot of mistakes that we make on the defensive end. We might slip up, but it doesn't matter because he makes a big block or provides a great presence close to the basket. At a minimum, he makes the other team think about him. He's always going to be there. Not Three playing. ball, Curry, it's in and out. Nice shot against the rebound. Two, Curry right there. He's one of the guys that needs to get going. He's an elite shooter for them. Again, another talented, young, first-year guy. But back to Justice, like he used to make guys think every single time they drove, and it was a huge difference. Akpara finds a cutting P.J. Good find by Chisam Akpara and the sophomore Chandler P.J. from Houston, but finished up his high school career at Phillips Exeter Academy in New Hampshire. He scores. He's had a big season averaging eight and a half points a game, but even more importantly than that, he is one of Harvard's key defenders on the perimeter. Haley gets it batted by Mack right back into his hands. Scovins thinking about it, pulls the trigger. Lesman the rebound. He's capable of making that shot. If you're Harvard, you're okay with a contested three, though. Army has had a tough start to the season shooting as Mack misses the layup. Scovins comes away with it. Army is a team we noted the offensive numbers averaging 60 points a game. That's 346th in the country as Scovins left it short. Lesmond, another rebound. PJ absorbs a foul from Kendall Haley. First foul on either squad. As Tommy Emmaker, you take a look, his 16th season. You know, his old college coach, Mike Krzyzewski, of course, was a student at the United States Military Academy and then eventually took over as the head coach. That's ha right. Had That's an opportunity right. to go on a recruiting trip back when he was at Duke with Coach K, and they took a detour off to take a look at the West Point campus there as Lesmond leaves that well short, but an offensive grab, Akpara. Max sees an open lane, but misses another lay-in. Got away with uh, goaltending there. Uh, some contact on the rim by one of the Army players. Got lucky there. Three ball, TJ Small. Nice looking stroke there by number 35, Small. I tell you what, that's what Army's going to need to do. Come up with all 50-50 balls, secure all rebounds, get out in transition, and get some easy open looks. Small shooting under 30% from three for the season. That's a good sign for the Black Knights. Akpara bothered by the length inside, and a foul going either against Scovins or Johnson. It will be the first on Josh Scovins. Coming off a career-tying 16 points in Army's win on Tuesday night. They played LeMoyne, and Kevin Kuick.
happy with the team, with the way they've responded since a blowout loss against Central Connecticut State. It still knows that it is a work in progress with such a young team. No question. Right now, the Army Black Knights, they're just laying the foundation for a new era in their program with the first year head coach and Coach Kulik. And he'll have them uh, right on track earlier, uh, sooner than later. And then obviously we saw Coach Amaker earlier, what he's done here in the Ivy League, we all know, seven championships in the last 11 years. Unbelievable. Chisa Makpara split, splits the free throws, and it's 5-3 Army nearly four minutes in. This is Blake Barker who entered at the last whistle. Into the hands of the Montgomery, New Jersey native Ryan Curry. Slashes his way, runs out of room. Curry on the drive, the kick out. It's small again, frees himself up for another triple. Now this time. Great look. the rebound. Great pump fake, and Harvard doing a good job right now securing rebounds. You don't want to give these guys second chance opportunities, especially with guys like Strobins who are big time offensive rebounders. Akpara, tough two to tie it. Three points early for Chisam Akpara, Bronxville, New York sophomore. Yeah, I like what Harvard's doing right now. They're going into Chisam Akpara almost on every possession right now. Curry dances through the lane, kick out, three ball. Won't go down, but a foul on the floor. The three was taken by Barker, who's coming off a career high 20 points in the win over LeMoyne. Timeout on the floor, but the Black Knights off to a good start in a tie game. Ever since I tried Hidden Valley Ranch, I finally found what I've been looking for. Mm -hmm. Oh my gosh. I know. How is this stuff so good? Hidden Valley Ranch. Only serious about flavor. There are trucks, and then there's the GMC Sierra. Available with the connected driving experience. And the world's first six-function multi-pro tailgate. GMC Sierra. It's the truck. Or just in time for the holidays, get 4,000 purchase cash on select 2023 Sierra models. Plus, current eligible GMC owners get an additional 2,500 purchase allowance. We are professional grid. Started for less at Target. Exclusive articles and tools. Top leagues and tournaments. Best stories in sports. On ESPN Plus. Tied at five, Adam Giardino with you. We're back here in Cambridge. Last time out, Harvard lost to Loyola Chicago. It was a 19-4 run to start the game for the Ramblers, and the Crimson never recovered. Amidst all those struggles, it was an uncharacteristically quiet scoring night for Malik Mack, but it was just the one assist that might have done more to raise the eyebrows of Tommy Amaker. Because of the way his season started, Amaker noted that Mack's now the focal point of opposing defense is just nine games into his college career. He joked, hey, against Loyola, they basically sent two defenders at him as soon as he walked out of the locker room for warm-ups. But with that attention, can it lead to opportunities for his teammate? Because now the rubric isn't for the points he scores, but the points he creates for everybody tonight. Mack will be looking to revert to that form that positioned him as one of the best points guards in the country over the first eight games of the season. Yeah, so much of it, Adam, is the attention he gets maybe freeing somebody else up but right now, the aggressiveness by Army has made life difficult for Harvard to settle into its offensive game plan. That was A.J. Allen Spock who jumped out on this ball, and it'll still be Harvard basketball, but nothing coming easy right now for Harvard when they have possession. Exactly right. Army right now playing very physical and trying to disrupt that Harvard offense and doing a great job getting the passing lanes, denying one pass away, and just being physical overall. 
Charlie Peterson, one of the Army captains, has checked into the game as well. And we get a whistle against Akpara and Harvard right off the inbound. Yeah, it looked like he stepped right yep. across that sideline, stepped in a little bit too early. So Harvard turns it over before they can even let loose the basketball. These teams do have a common opponent. Both played Indiana in Indiana, although Harvard played in Indianapolis. Here's a three ball. It's shy by T.J. Small. He made his first, missed his last two. Tommy Amaker said, you know, Army played Indiana as well, maybe better than we did, and we gave Indiana all that it could handle. Akpara to Lesmond, a corner three. Harvard waiting for its first, and the rebound by Blake Barker. Good pass, good look. Give Louis Lesmond, number 23, those open looks. He'll make more than he misses. And Small draws a whistle. That'll be a foul against Akpara. First one on him. And no, Tommy Amaker said, you know, Army, you look at their record, two and seven. They're a lot better than that record would indicate. The record can sometimes lie to you. And you, know, you look at Army's wins and you say, okay, they played a Division three school in one of them in a LeMoyne squad, which is in its first month as a Division one men's basketball program. You could say, well, well, where's the quality win? But it's not necessarily about those results. They, they always play hard. You always know that an Army squad is going to give you everything it has. It's going to be tough. And speaking of tough, Ryan Curry driving the lane for two more. Yeah, I think you're exactly right. You're watching this game right now. This is a disciplined, tough, connected team right now, these Army Black Knights. I've been impressed just in this early few minutes of this game. Six and a half minutes in, Army has not trailed. Denim Wojcik out to Batiste, and Harvard still waiting for that first three ball to go down. Another great defensive stance by Army, all, helping in all the right areas, really selling out on the helps ID on the ball screen rolls by Harvard and forcing perimeter shots. Small to the basket, yes, and the foul. DJ Small, Kenner, Louisiana native. Five early points with a chance to add one more. Nice drive right there by 35. Good looking guard. Good size to him, good strength. Making his presence felt early in this game. And that's where we talked about earlier. Probably missing Mr. Ajibor right there because at a minimum, he's coming over to contest that shot and at least change it or block it. A first year player, Luca Ace Nesteski, picks up the foul. He's from the very masculine sounding manly Australia. <laughs> Black Knights up by four. Ace Nesteski, uh, you know, offered a professional rugby contract early in his uh, youth athletic career. Yeah, you know the toughness is there as P.J. gets a foul drawn on him as he'll go to the free throw line. That's the second foul on Army at this point, or the fourth, excuse me. So already Army racking up the fouls. This is the 25th time these programs have met. First time since 2009 when the Black Knights won by three. As you see, the uh, series been a little bit tilted in favor of Harvard since the Ivy League came into play. A lot of the matchups came in the first half of the last century. Yeah, it's impressive when you think about how far back these institutions go and these programs go. These two historic, prestigious universities in our country, and both producing so many iconic leaders and contributors to our society that have gone on to change our country and the world. The Black Knights in a, a period of transition here with Kevin Kuick, the former Notre Dame player, now head coach, as P.J. goes one for two at the line. Here's the drive by Barker. No, but an offensive rebound by Allen Spock. Good defense and a takeaway by P.J. P.J. to the basket. He's got it in the foul. Great defensive stance right there by number 13. That's what he can do, 13 P.J. He's one of their best perimeter defenders. He has active hands. You see him get a piece of the ball, comes up with it, and then he has the strength and the skill to finish in contract. There's the contact and one. Great drive by Mr. P.J. There it is again. Eyes up on the rim. Great concentration. Quabena Davis called for the foul. Chandler P.J. grew up in uh, overseas style of basketball. Grew up in Europe. His father was his coach and 
you know, he learned a lot about the fundamentals playing you know that European style he played a bit in Japan as well and when he came over to the United States he had to adjust to the American style where it is so much more based on physicality and athleticism and the power components so you know, he's really blending both of those styles nicely no question they come from another military background uh, fitting for this game but he is a he's a mature sophomore to say the least Peterson one of the most experienced players on the team airballed the hook and then it falls out of the hands of Allen Spock but it will stay with the Black Knights making the trip up from West Point yesterday and they will stick around to go to the Army Navy football game at Gillette Stadium tomorrow the reason that this game was scheduled up here and tonight Three seconds left on the shot clock. Ball knocked around and out of bounds with one second to shoot here for Army. Going to have to get something up to the rim right here, probably into the paint for either a tip-in or a quick catch and shoot. It'll be inbounded by Dylan Blair. Here's Barker, and this shot won't count. There's a quick buzzer on the shot clock. It was probably less than a yeah. second. Quick one second, to say the least. <laughs> Army might send up an investigation as to uh, there's a hometown clock operator here at Levitis Pavilion based on how quickly yeah, that was. 31 Barker was looking around like, hey, man, I'm pretty sure that wasn't a one second clock. Xavier Nesbitt into the game for Harvard. Here's Wojcik, and he traveled with it. And so a turnover by Harvard will take us to a timeout. Army and Harvard, it's been a good start. Level at nine, and Chandler PJ has six points to lead all scores. Half, one and two, two and four. Half of black Americans don't have enough savings to retire. So let's retire in the closet. Let's step forward together and let's rise together because dignity, security, retirement is for all. We should worry about ChatGPT, but we should not panic about ChatGPT. My name is Steve Pinker. I am a professor of psychology at Harvard University. ChatGPT is an artificial intelligence model that has uh, been trained on half a trillion words of text. Basically, it slurped up the entire internet, and it's been adapted so that people can ask it questions, and it takes its best guess at stringing words together that make a plausible answer. We could worry about disinformation produced on a mass scale, but we'll have to develop defenses and skepticism. And we also have to worry about taking the output of ChatGPT too seriously, because it doesn't know anything. It doesn't have a factual database. It doesn't have any goal toward telling the truth. It just has a goal of continuing the conversation. And it strings words together, often without any regard to whether they correspond to anything in the world. And so it can generate a lot of flapdoodle quickly if people rely on it as an authoritative source of uh, the factual state of the world they will often go wrong as we mentioned before the break army navy football game of course tomorrow down in foxborough and this game was specifically scheduled for tonight because in the past army men's basketball had played the day of the game but Kevin Kuick said we got to find a way to get these guys to this game for the first time they found a great partner in Harvard who is always looking for home games and so this series begins here at Levitis Pavilion and tomorrow all these guys in Army will head down to Foxborough and uh, cheer on their squad to beat Navy really cool and a great job just thinking you know about your student athletes if you're coach Kuick right there thinking about the student athlete experience and being able to support your classmates and fellow athletes really really smart and great for harvard to take this game and a really cool thing we all know how special that football game is and so no surprise pretty good contingent of folks wearing beat navy shirts here in the crowd tonight it's also harvard's military appreciation game i think a good opponent for for that uh, bit of marketing. Yeah, it makes sense. Someone thinking way outside the box on that one. 
Army has not trailed to this point. Looking to pick up their third consecutive win. And they're first on the road. They are 0-4 away from West Point. Shot clock under 10. Barker gives it up to Curry. Looking to drive. Two seconds to shoot. Has to huck one up. And rebound comes over to Nesbitt, who keeps himself from falling out of bounds. Good defense by Harvard. It's an Army team that will often use up most of the shot clock. They don't play to breakneck speed offensively. Definitely a good defensive stance, but I thought Army kind of bailed out Harvard there. Three ball, Nesbitt, and Harvard takes its first lead. Number three, Nesbitt stepping up with the big shot. And what I mean by that previous possession is that you had Ace Nesesky, the big fella, number 35 for Harvard, on number two, Curry. And then Army set another ball screen, which allowed them to switch to a more favorable matchup for Harvard. And a three ball for Nesbitt, his second with Harvard. Here's a steal by Tyler Simon for two more. Tyler Simon, number zero. The Houston native, another guy capable of getting in passing lanes, using his athleticism and his length to come up with easy steals and opportunities. Got a chance to play in his hometown when Harvard went down to Rice and got a win in Texas earlier this season. Things have gotten off to a better start than I think many would have anticipated as Curry with the shot clock late again, kicks it out, Barker, three, and that was one that was sorely needed for the Black Knights. Very good offense right there by Army. Everything made sense. Great ball screen versus the drop coverage. Harvard and the snake dribble by number two to the open kick out. Number 31 for a great three. 31 Barker knocking it down. Akpara gives it up. A little too hot for Wojcik to handle. More than halfway through the opening half, it's a two-point Harvard lead and a foul called on Curry here. He's got his palms up wondering, who, me? That is the sixth Army foul, so free throws from here on out after the dribbling by Wojcik. Good We're call. going to get Jared Cross for that foul. The right call, definitely some contact there. Nesbitt, this is a two. Rebounded by Johnson and a foul on Ace Nesterski. One of those over-eager try and recover the offensive rebound fouls. And that's an area where they really miss Ajibor. The offensive glass is, you know, much as he contributes offensively with some scoring, it's getting those second chances that he was often so good at. And nope. with Justice Algebor, he missed it last week, announced hand surgery, expected to miss the next month and a half or so. They hope to get him back later in the season. Yeah, no question. He just, you know, his presence on both ends of the floor was something that really helped Harvard. He drew a lot of attention uh, from the opponent's defense and opened up skip passes and other things. And anytime he jumps, he's favored to get that ball because he's a major uh, athlete that can really get up. That ball was deflected into the backcourt. Curry spinning, floating, rebound Johnson, and the foul on the floor on the Crimson. I'll tell you what, number two Curry, he is a, a very good looking, very good looking young player right there. He misses the floater. And we see the big time rebound right there by strong 54 Johnson going up. But Curry has game, number two. I mean, he is a bright future between him and Scovins and some other guys on this team. Uh, but he can really play. You can see it in his game. Kevin Kuhick raved about his competitiveness as Barker too strong on the three, but an offensive rebound by Cross and then turned over. Mack has had a quiet start to his game, still waiting for his first points. But Harvard leads by two. Lesmond to Akpara playing with two fouls. Lesmond, extra pass. And good ball movement by the Crimson. Yeah. Louis Lesmond's first points. Yeah, I think we're going to see more of that where they're going, trying to play inside out, go through Chisum Akpara, number 10, or any other post player, draw the help, and then look to kick out, make the extra pass, and find open shooters. Tommy Amaker says he's got to be more consistent than what we saw on Saturday. And Jared Cross, who didn't play the last three games, knocks down a triple to keep it a two-point game. Nice-looking stroke right there by Mr. Cross. Don't want to leave him open if you're the Crimson. Mack might have forced that one. 
Goes for the steal, Curry. Getting back to what we were saying, Kevin Kuick says the competitiveness between Curry and Scovins, those two freshmen really bring it at a high level. Into the corner again, Barker. Well, he'd been waiting for that one to fall. His second three ball coming off 20 points on Tuesday night, and Army back in front by one. Yeah, no doubt about it, 31, Barker can really shoot. That whole play, though, that whole sequence started with number two, Curry, though. But Lesmond's getting hot. Two threes for Louis Lesmond. Curry. About to see a shooting gallery open up here at Levitis Pavilion if that went in. Curry. Ten to shoot. Seven left in the half. Cross. On the drive, kicking out. That's a deep three from Barker at the buzzer. Offensive rebound, Johnson, and he's fouled. Abe Johnson's kept so many possessions alive, and it will be Army basketball when we come back. Harvard up by two after Army took the brief lead, but Louis Lesmond grabbed it right back. Ever since I tried Hidden Valley Ranch, I finally found what I've been looking for. Mm -hmm. Oh my gosh. I know. How is this stuff so good? Hidden Valley Ranch. Oh, these areas about flavor. There are trucks, and then there's the GMC Sierra. Available with the connected driving experience. And the world's first six-function multi-pro tailgate. GMC Sierra. It's the truck. Or just in time for the holidays, get 4,000 purchase cash on select 2023 Sierra models. Plus, current eligible GMC owners get an additional 2,500 purchase allowance. We are professional grade GMC. After 51 years, Popeyes is crashing the wings party with five flavors. Makes no sense it took so long. Crispy outside, juicy inside. Who are you? Shh. We don't make sense. We make chicken. Y'all good? Love that chicken from... Get your party started for less at Target. What if your workout transported you here? What if distractions disappeared and you moved like magic? This is Unreal Fitness. This is Supernatural. Harvard up by two, and Justice Ajibor, this is what Harvard is missing with him not out there. You see where he ranks in the Ivy League, especially when it comes to rebounds. And early on here, Donnie, rebounding has been a big factor keeping the Black Knights in this game. No question. It's what we talked about early on when comparing various stats categories for both these teams that if Army can get on the offensive glass and give themselves second chance opportunities that can result in open threes or putbacks or even fouls, that's a huge benefit and help for them to pull this game out. Out of bounds as Charlie Peterson couldn't keep it with him on the sideline. And so Harvard forces the turnover after the foul on Thomas Batiste before the break. And Ball in the hands of Malik Mack has not scored. Harvard has the lead, but unusual, but maybe less unusual moving forward with all the attention he gets from opposing defenses. Yeah, I think so. I think the scout is out. We know he's a talented player. You see number 10, Chisa Makpara, taking to the basket and finishing. Uh, but exactly right. He's going to get through a stage of this uh, year where he's going to have to do different things and take what the defense is giving him. Right now, I'm impressed with the fact that he is not forcing it because 
Army is keen on him. They don't give him any room to breathe. They got two guys on him that most of the times he's looking to drive. So he's going to have to find his way and learn how to play versus this type of scout and defensive pressure. But go figure, you know, two of the, the exciting first-year players that we were talking about early, Malik Mack and Josh Scovins, both still sitting on zero points as this is out off Lesman. Army basketball, six to shoot. Scovins still sitting on a goose egg in the points column. Yeah, I like to see him take a few more open shots, get himself going. Last couple threes he's taken, he's had a hand in his face. Mack getting double teamed every time he has the basketball. And he will draw the whistle and get a chance to go to the free throw line. One and one coming up for Malik Mack, who at the free throw line is shooting nearly 87%, which ranks third in the Ivy League. You see there in that replay, anytime he gets past one defender, there's another defender there waiting for him. And that's something he's going to have to get used to. And he's a tremendous talent. He'll figure it out. Uh, this is just part of the process. You know, a lot of times when you have a good freshman season, sometimes you don't see that attention until you come back for your sophomore season. But when you get off to the type of start that Mac has this year, uh, coaches don't wait uh, until your second year before they start pinning their game plans around stopping you, right? No question. I mean, it was obvious from, from the jump during the season that if you want to beat Harvard, you have to figure out uh, something and how to handle number two, Mac. Something Tommy Amaker, he knew to a degree that he was getting a, a really good player. There's a rare miss by Mac. And so Harvard with its biggest lead of the game, five points. Here's the drive by Kendall Haley, and he takes a whack. And Haley will go to the free throw line. These will be the first free throw attempts for Haley in his college career. Freshman from Los Angeles. We'll see if he can help boost Army, which is worst in the nation in free throw percentage. They've only hit 52% of their free throws this season, but Haley has no culpability in that until right there. You jinxed him. You jinxed him. I guess can't jinx a guy who's never shot a free throw in college, true. right? That's true. That's true. It's something that Kevin Cook said, if I had an answer for it, you know, we'd be a lot better. But we work on it at some point. It just becomes an individual component. But uh, needless to say, it is hard to win games when you're not making free throws. No question. And there's not much else you could do other than what they are doing. Let's work on it, practice it, get better. Take it one day at a time. And a lot of times it's a confidence thing, too. And once they start seeing them fall, I imagine they'll all get better as a team. P.J., quick trigger. Rebounded by Small. Good look right there by P.J. I thought he rushed it uh, a little bit for being such an open look. Would have liked him to take his time, gather his feet a little bit more. Ball always seems to find its way into Curry's hands for a significant portion of every possession. Freshman guard gives it up. Scovins under the basket, blocked by Batiste, but the follow rolls off the rim. Got his miss, but then did not get a third bite at the apple there. Good defense inside by Batiste, who's earned these starting minutes because of Ajibor's absence. Yeah. He was right place at the right time, and great help side defense, great positioning. He's a great player, too. Another promising young first-year guy for the Crimson can shoot it and score down low and very active. Mack passed up the three, kicks out Lesmond. Straightaway three. Third triple for Louis Lesmond. And the Parisians given Harvard a seven-point lead. And a foul on Batiste on the other end as Small drove to the basket. And he'll be at the free throw line. Second personal on the Washington, D.C. native Thomas Batiste. But Louis Lesmond, he was 0 of 8 from the field in Chicago on Saturday, 0 for 4 from downtown. That has not carried its over, itself back to Cambridge. He's taken five shots, all threes, and drilled three of them. Yeah, that was an anomaly. Louis Lesmond, number 23, is a great shooter. And if you give him open looks, he's going to make more than he misses. I tell you what, though, back to you know, number two, Mac, and his maturity and trying to figure this out as teams start to key on him. Great drive and a great find to his shooter. Uh, 
I'm telling you, this kid can do everything on the floor, and it's going to be fun to watch him develop as he goes on in this Harvard Crimson program. Those were big free throws for Small as the runner by P.J. won't go. Black Knights, quick early shot, too strong. Rebounded by Lesmon. This pace right here favors the Crimson. This is what they want to do. They want to play fast. Mack on the gather, and he'll draw another foul. Back to the free throw line for Malik Mack from Oxon Hill, Maryland in the DMV. This one charged to Scobins. That's his second personal. And two free throws here for Malik Mack. Played for one of the best AAU programs in the country, one of the best high schools, and one of the best uh, high school leagues in the country in Washington, D.C., in the Catholic League. And, you know, Tommy Hipker said, you know, he, he was so good in high school, you, know, you can't play college basketball as a high schooler, so he just went and found the, the best level that he could play at, and he was tremendous. We knew we were getting a, a really, really talented player, but an off night from the free throw line. He's missed three of his four attempts. Yeah, I guess he's human. I guess, <laughs> you know, again, finding his way. T.J. Small. And that last shot that Army took, only four seconds into the shot clock, it was almost shocking. Now they've drawn out each possession. Small left open, a three! And I, I think that is the game plan. That is the blueprint for an offensive possession if you're Army right now trying to get a W on the road. That's take your time, use the clock, make the defense work, find a, a mistake by the defense, and then make them pay. Small, a career high, 10 points in the first half. There's Mack, his first field goal. He must have heard you say something about him having an off night. You want to change your mind. He's got three points with just over three minutes to go in the first half. He averages over 20, and boy, that was pretty from Allen Spock. Nice drive, nice finish right there by number 55, Allen Spock. I tell you what, this, this Army team right now, they're dialed in. Like, this is exactly where they want to be in this first half. Keep it close into halftime. Walk Double. away out of Cambridge with a, with a steal, W on the road. Mack on the drive, and he'll go back to the free throw line. Looks like he's starting to assert himself a little bit more. He's not getting a lot of the shots to fall, but getting himself trips to the charity stripe. That's where he'll be when we come back. But Harvard with Mack up to a two-point lead against a gritty Army squad. This is an epic, action-packed, adventure-filled story of Athletic Brewing's revolutionary non-alcoholic beer and the founders behind it. I'm Bill. And I'm John. You see, this is no ordinary non-alcoholic beer. These are great tasting brews that are fit for all times. And they all started with a crazy idea. Why can't there just be an amazing non-alcoholic beer that wouldn't affect me the next day? And one that actually tasted great? Oh, wow. That's a great idea. And there you have it. Just two totally delusional people. <laughs> Welcome to the community. We want to introduce ourselves to you. We're a not-for-profit financial cooperative founded and operated by Harvard employees. If you work or study at Harvard or any of the teaching hospitals, you and your family are eligible to join. We've helped thousands in the community buy their first homes, pay off their student loans, and build strong credit. Ask your friends and colleagues why the bank of HUEC. And get to know us at huecu.org slash hello.
got a fun one at Levitis Pavilion. Harvard and Army, the preseason poll, didn't think much of either of these squads. Harvard looks like it's going to be a better team in sixth place in the Ivy League based on the early returns, Donnie. Yeah, I think so. I think they're definitely turning some heads early on in the season at 6-3. and three. Uh, You know, I always say about rankings, you know, it's not where you start, not where you start on the rankings. It's where you finish. And uh, I think right now we're seeing a team uh, in the Crimson that are just connected and playing well together. Like they seem very, they don't seem like a young team. They seem like a group of guys that have been playing for several years. The Patriot League Army picked to finish 10th in the 10-team Patriot League with three-time defending champion Colgate expected to uh, get back to the NCAA tournament. But that's certainly an Army squad in transition. They lost so much from last year. Four of their five starters from a season ago are gone, including the scoring champion in the Patriot League in Jalen Rucker, averaged over 16 and a half points a game. Yeah, it's like we said, you know, it's the first year, first year head coach and Coach Kulik. And again, they, like you said, they lost a ton. But I tell you what, this team does not look like a last place team. Again, this is just one game, one half. And I've seen a lot of basketball. I wouldn't be surprised if they finished higher than last place in the Patriots. It looks like a team that's gotten a lot of confidence based on the, the last two results. As Johnson goes over Batiste but doesn't hit the hook. See Harvard coming out a little zone right there, switching up their defensive look. Mack into the lane, lost it. Army dislodging the basketball. Kendall Haley, one of many players who went to the United States Military Academy prep school prior to going to West Point. School is actually located in West Point as there's a beautiful drive and finish by TJ Small. Another one who went to the prep school and Kevin Kuick says when we get those players who come out of the prep school, they're already integrated into the lifestyle here. It's almost like getting a redshirt freshman as Simon turns it over. Yeah, it makes sense. Complete sense. I think that's some of they would, those type of players are the ones they're going to be looking to recruit and good fit for their program. Great drive right here. Oh, excuse me, this is the uh, Eric pass on the ball screen from Simon to Batiste. Uh, but great drive in that previous possession by number 35 Smalls. And you know, if you're Harvard, you really got to step up and take that charge. You got to be ready to contest it. It can't be neither. Army can take the lead with a basket here. A minute 20 to go before halftime. More zone by the Crimson. Curry on the drive, kick out, three ball, small, too strong. Offensive rebounds, Haley. Deflected pass and Simon the interception. Here's Mack, lines one up. Has not been able to get going from the field. He's got four points. And Army another opportunity to grab the lead again. Here's Haley running to the basket with a right hand. Kendall Haley. Three points, most he's had in his young college career. Impressive finish, impressive drive. P.J. into the corner, Simon left all alone. Johnson the rebound. And now the shot clock, virtually no difference between that and the game clock. Army can take a lead into halftime and maybe more than a one point lead. I'll be playing well right now. It'd be nice to go into halftime with a made bucket right here. Black Knights fans erupting behind their bench. Five to shoot. Curry gets it right back. Three left on the timer. Curry with a runner. It falls off. And the Black Knights will go into the locker room with a one point. And Kevin Kuick. Likely happy with the way that first half went. His team in search of a third straight win. Harvard trying to bounce back from a loss its last time out in Chicago. Harvard's fourth home game of the season. They are 3-0 at home. Malik Mack misses the three and a rebound by Josh Scoban. Still waiting to score his first point tonight, but Army is in the lead. Crimson looking to get Malik Mack going early, trying to create an easy opportunity for him. Good defense by Army, contesting at three. And Mack with four first half points. Curry to Scovins. Curry gets it back with Mack closing, and the three won't go.
Harvard looking to jump back into the lead. It was a back and forth first half. There's Thomas Batiste bothered by the defense. Good defense played by the much smaller Kendall Haley. Great job holding his ground and going vertical and not fouling, not bailing him out. Scovins driving on Mack, still can't get it to go. For Scovins, 0 for his first seven from the field. Akpara gets the two right around Johnson. Akpara with seven points. Harvard's second leading scorer, it was Louis Lesmond who had nine on three three-pointers to lead all Crimson. Haley, kick out, extra pass, three ball, small, short. Offensive rebound, another one. That is the 11th offensive board for the Black Knights tonight. And Haley gets the bump from Malik Mack, first foul on either squad. And while we have a moment, let's toss things over to our sideline reporter, Adam Giardino. Thank you very much, Alex. Had a chance to chat with Harvard assistant Larry Farmer, and he said, you know, rebounding, huge point of emphasis, like you just said. Now it's 11 offensive rebounds for the Black Knights. And how do you get Malik Mack going? Well, he's trying to fall, find his way, but they said, Malik, you got to let the ball breathe. Now, if you're Army, they had 16 three-point attempts in that first half. I said... If you finish with 32, is that a good thing? They said, you know, as long as we keep crashing the glass, guys keep letting it fly, and they just want to make sure their team's not fat and happy just because they've got a one-point lead on the road at halftime. Well, and they get yet another offensive rebound, and a foul here on Denim Wojcik for Harvard. And finally, Scovins gets one to drop. Yeah, Harvard's got to do something about these offensive rebounds. I mean... It can really change the whole vibe of a game when the other team is clearly just playing harder and being more physical and tough. Wojcik lost the ball. Small up to Haley. Thought about the three, goes for the drive, kick out Scovins. And now left all alone, it's Small. A three, no. And Wojcik gets the rebound. Love how Army is playing right now. Very fortunate if you're Crimson, they didn't come away with the basketball. Batiste for the lead. And that's tapped out of bounds. Army basketball. I'm waiting to see right now, looking at this Crimson team, like who's going to step up and start, you know, being a vocal leader to get their team going. And it doesn't always have to be by your mouth. You can do it with your actions as well. But right now, I love what Army is doing, running their offense. They're tough, they're crisp. They right now look to be the better team on this court. Harvard has one of its two captains on the floor right now in Wojcik. P.J. falls down. It's given to Johnson with a left-hand finish. Abe Johnson, second bucket of the game. Army up by three. Great find on the roll there and a terrific finish by 54 Johnson. Lesmond falls off his side and then Johnson gets the rebound. Abe Johnson now with a dozen boards. Abe Johnson's a big dude. 50. I mean, look at this guy out here. Setting the screen right here. He's Johnson, put together. 6'8", 243. Curry fouled on the three. And Ryan Curry will be going to the free throw line for three attempts. Try and build on this three-point Black Knight advantage. Stepping out on the ball screen. Just a little too aggressive. Right there at 15, Batiste found himself a little too deep on that ball screen coverage and then had to make up for that ground and overclosed out committing the foul. Curry 5 of 7 at the free throw line in his young college career. You get a look at the touch on the hand there. That's the third foul on Batiste. And the Black Knights now with their biggest lead of the game. They had previously led 9-5 early. And a chance to run the advantage to half a dozen. Yeah, picking up where they left off in that first half. Ryan Curry, 3-for-3. Three three. Montgomery, New Jersey native. Making it 37-31, Black Knights. Looking to pick up their first road win of the year. Batiste down low, bothered by the length of Scovins and Johnson. 
Right idea. I like things going to the rim right now if you're the Crimson. You have to convert. Curry kicks it small through traffic. And Tommy Emaker wants to time out. It's been a career night for TJ Small. And the Louisiana native has made it an eight-point Army lead. And the beautiful passing by Curry set it up. Well, the freshmen Ryan Curry and Josh Scovins have scored five of Army's nine points since halftime. They are the top two scoring freshmen in the Patriot League and a really good foundation for this Army program and Kevin Kuwick to build around. No question. I've been very impressed with both of them, especially number two, the way he's been playing. Curry, he's setting the table, whether it be for himself or his teammates. And then now you have Scovins joining the fray in the second half, starting to produce a little bit more himself. Scovin's just one bucket after he had a career-high tying 16 points against LeMoyne on Tuesday night. He's been in double figures five consecutive games, averaging over 13 points a game in that span. Had a double-double against Central Connecticut State, but it's not necessarily been his start to the night. We'll see how that changes as Harvard coming out of the timeout, trailing by a snowman. Batiste lofts it for Akpara, goes through two defenders, and draws the foul. Akpara's a load down there. When he catches the ball, he's going to command attention. And if you let him get an angle, you can see right there, a little late on the help. If you get caught on contact, you have to go vertical in that restricted charge. That's a foul on Johnson, and that will take us to another timeout. Army up 39-31. But Harvard trying to show some signs early in this second half. At Team Impact, we pair kids who have been sidelined by serious illness and disability with college teams from across the country. Up, big man? You good? It's more than a single day meet and greet or photo opportunity. Our program places kids on a multi-year journey, becoming true members of the collegiate athletics team. We are Penn State. LA. From signing day to game day. I can't describe it. It feels amazing. Team Impact. All in, all together. One and two, two and four. Half of black Americans don't have enough savings to retire. So let's retire inequality. Let's step forward together and let's rise together because dignity, security, retirement is for all. Well, Army always has a large roster. They don't have the same limits that a lot of other uh, programs do as far as number of players, but they also don't have limits on where they can recruit. Of course, the United States Military Academy gets recruits from all over. So many, we had to make two separate graphics here to fit all 15 states that are represented by the Black Knights, a uh, diverse group from all over the country and coming together for a greater cause than basketball. No doubt about it as Chisam Akpara draws this foul on the floor coming out of the timeout. Great take right there by Akpara. They're going to need 
much more of this from number 10. Getting to the rim, see the foul, the reach. He's a matchup nightmare because, again, he's a guard in a forward's body. He can really drive. That's the third foul on Johnson, which is worth keeping an eye on given how important he's been. He comes out of the game. Charlie Peterson comes back in. Ten seconds to shoot. Wojcik took a peek back to the shot clock on the opposite basket. Akpara drives into the body of Curry, doesn't get the call, but drains the shot. Big time shot right there. Desperately needed right now by the Crimson to see if they can get them going on the defensive end. But, you know, if you're Army, that was actually a really good defensive stance. Uh, just a big time shot by number 10, Akpara. Akpara, no call, no problem. Haley around the screen from Peterson, goes to the basket, takes a hack, and draws the foul. Kendall Haley is certainly not shy about trying to make an impact. This is a young team. They start three freshmen. You know, Harvard, a very young team as well. And you, know, you go through those growing pains. We, we saw it you know, from Harvard's perspective on Saturday against Loyola Chicago. You figure those type of games, they're going to happen. And they've happened often here to Army. And for Kevin Kuick, a first-year head coach, he's getting to know this team as well. He said, you know, I didn't recruit any of these guys. I'm still getting to know who they are. They're still getting to know who I am and getting to know the system. It's going to be a, a long process. No question. You know, for any team, there's going to be ups and downs, but especially for a young team. And you have to remember, it's a long season, and it's, it's a journey, and uh, it's a process to become a championship team. It doesn't happen overnight. That foul, the fourth on Thomas Batiste, so one of Harvard's starters. And the man who's starting because of the absence of one of their original starters, Justice Ajibor, not in there. So Harvard a little bit light in terms of its depth in the front court, and that's a charge against Akpara. Would like to see that one again. I'm not sure he got there in time unless number 10 lowered his shoulder. No, you know what? I like that call. That's a great Great job moving their feet, getting to the spot. Number four, Skoven taking it right there on the chest, and you did see the little bit of lean of a shoulder and a little bit of a dip by number 10, Akpara. Good call. That's the third on the sophomore from Bronxville, New York. Harvard down by seven. And Army a chance to extend that advantage. Black Knights drawing another foul on Wojcik. The Army's playing, you know, really well. You, you can say, okay, the, the two games they played prior to this against a Division Three school and against Lemoyne, again, new Division One school. But I'll tell you what, sometimes just getting results doesn't matter who it's against can give you so much confidence and give you, okay, this is what's working for us. So when you play a team like Harvard, who's been a really good team this year, uh, those results can transfer. Absolutely, confidence is an amazing thing. And uh, whether it's running your offense, executing, or just seeing a couple shots go down in those games, those previous two games, can pay dividends moving forward. There's no question about that. Ace Nesterski got a piece of that ball. Went to the Scots College, an all-boys school in Australia prior to coming to Florida and finishing out his high school career at IMG Academy. Scovins, wild on the shot. Harvard trying to dig out of the hole. The Army just has Harvard a little bit out of sync offensively with their pressure and their discipline. There goes Mack, is blocked. Knocked away. Curry looking for an outlet. Gives it up to one of the captains, Peterson. Curry. Around the screen, fakes the pass, gives it Small, a triple! T.J. Small having a night, career high, 17 points. Again, starting with number two, Curry getting in the paint and then finding the hot hand at number 35, Smalls. Wojcik to Lesmond, he'll take it himself. Harvard needs that, down by 10. Here's Scovins, gets it back off the bat from Wojcik. Curry, Smalls, he's feeling it, but not this time. 
Harvard trying to play fast. Got a quiet night from their leading scorer, Malik Mack. Three ball, Wojcik. Big shot right there by Wojcik. Loved his decision to not rush the shot and instead shot fake, let number two Curry fly by and then gather himself in rhythm three. Big time shot by number 55, Wojcik right there. His father, military connection, played at the United States Naval Academy alongside David Robinson. Doug now on Tom Izzo's staff at Michigan State as this is knocked away a kick but a foul called first and that'll be against Louis Lesmond first one on Lesmond Scovins and Haley will check out Blake Barker comes back in so does AJ Allen Spock and free throws for Ryan Curry with Harvard over the limit. Yeah, something to watch right now. Curry Ar made all three of his free throws earlier. Yeah, the Army in the bonus now. They look at the team foul, seven to two. Uh, this could be something to watch down the stretch, especially if Army gets in the double bonus here soon. Front end won't go. Army has been much better at the free throw line tonight. Harvard has really struggled there. Malik Mack calls his own number, hits it in a foul. Big time shot right there. I love, again, the shot fake and the quick step back. And again, number two Curry, like, you know, number two Mack is a big time scorer. Number two Curry, as you'll see here, has to close and recover in a hurry. Trying to get there, take away the open shot. Got him with the body. Good call. And now going for the four point play. Quick step back by Mack. Got to give him a, a place to land. Easy call for the ref. Launched into the jet stream, and Mack makes it a four-point play. And Harvard down by 10 a moment ago is cut it to three. 7-0 run in 83 seconds for the Crimson. Pulled in by Allen Spock. Dylan Blair. Driving on Ace Nesterski, kick out small. Oh, there's a great response. 20 for TJ Small. Great answer by the Black Knights there. Again, 35 Small just lighting it up. Another insult. We got a steal. Knock away, Blake Barker for two more. And a foul. I tell you what, just a great answer overall in these last two possessions by the Black Knights. You thought Harvard was getting some momentum right there, and then no. The Black Knights come right back to see the steal. Number 31, Barker taking it. The length of the floor and the finish with the foul. Lesman the foul. Army the lead. Up by eight. A chance for it to be nine shortly after we come back. Giardino with you here at Labidi Pavilion. A quick counterpunch by Army re-extends us to an eight-point lead for the Cadets. They are led by Kevin Kuwick, who took over earlier this year after seven years under the guidance of Jimmy Allen. The Black Knights had gotten out to a slow start before winning their last two games coming into tonight. And one thing, guys, that have been lacking has been the offensive efficiency in large part due to higher turnovers, poor shooting from deep. Both of those things obviously not an issue tonight. And you can see the numbers on your screen. The previous four years on staff for Kuwik have been far more fruitful offensively, particularly with those Davidson Wildcats. So there have been some growing pains for the offense under a new head coach, but they're working to become more efficient. And uh, entering tonight, only Coffin State and Mississippi Valley State have been worse in that area this season in the entire country than the Cadets. Yeah, when we talked to Kevin Kuick, he, he said that they want to incorporate some of the Davidson offensive concepts. As here's an offensive rebound, but a travel called against Charlie Peterson. Uh, they want to have the motion, moving the ball well, smart players making great decisions, good spacing. That's kind of what they want to do as far as their offensive approach, ideally. Yeah, no question. And again, it takes time, and Coach Kuick does a great job. He's a great coach. He'll get him there like we mentioned before, sooner than later. Spent 25 years as an assistant coach 
prior to getting the nod as a head coach for the very first time this past spring. Louis Lesmond draws a foul. That'll go against Barker, who sparked that takeaway and steal, had a chance for the three-point play, but a 5-0 run after a 7-0 Harvard run turned a three-point game into an eight-point lead here for the Black Knights, who have seemingly been able to answer every counter that the Crimson have presented tonight. Yeah, it's been a great game uh, overall in terms of just from a fan perspective, but Army just playing very well uh, throughout. Wojcik drives and draws a whistle on his gather to the basket. That's the fifth foul on Army. Nice ball fake right there by 55 Wojcik, getting in the seam, beating the rotation. That's the first on Dylan Blair. Malik Mack, eight points. He averages 20.4. Gets that ball to P.J. who puts it in. Nice pass, a nice catch right there by 13 P.J. to come up with it and get the wide open layup. Allen Spock, a push off. He's got the size advantage on Wojcik and Wojcik made sure the officiating crew saw the push. Yeah, and again, a good job. Look at Wojcik right there, 55, moving his feet, beating him to the spot, absorbing the contact. Great job. And a timeout taken by Army. And we'll keep it here with the lead cut to six at this point. You know, we, we talked a little bit about Kevin Kuick and just his journey becoming a head coach, but his journey included a heck of a lot more than that. He served in Iraq. He took a leave of absence when he was an assistant coach at Ohio University. He was a, a part of the battalion, engineer battalion for the Indiana National Guard. He earned the bronze store from Victoria's service to the Army's highest merit award. And uh, it was really an amazing experience. And it, it, he still has his combat boots. He brought them into his office. And he has them there when he talks to the families of recruits. He says, I'm not asking your son to do anything that I wasn't willing to do myself. Talk about a fit. What a wonderful fit in terms of basketball coach for this program. Yeah, maybe the best fit ever. But, like, what an incredible, like, backstory. And not your typical coaching track, but just amazing what he's done, not only in his coaching career, but for our country. Uh, much respect to Coach Kulik. He was up in Mazel. He did IED sweeps. A little bit of everything. Recon is P.J into double figures with 10 points, and Harvard clawing back to a four-point game. He said he was with a, a whole regiment from Indiana, guys that love the Indiana Hoosiers. He actually had a chance to interview Bobby Knight as part of the uh, Armed Forces Radio Network. As this goes off the side of the backboard and out, uh, he had a chance to interview him via satellite as a, a talk show host, and. Uh, he, he had a bunch of guys with him who all they want to do is talk Indiana basketball with Bob Knight. But at that time, Bob Knight was not interested at all in talking about IU. And uh, uh, really, of course, the great connection between this Army program and Coach Knight, who was a young head coach. And he actually helped Army qualify for their only NCAA tournament. But the Black Knights elected not to go to the NCAA tournament in the late 60s. They went to the NIT to avoid UCLA, but uh, maybe they wish they had because Army's one of four programs, original NCAA programs, that has still never been to the NCAA tournament. I'm sure it was an entertaining interview with Coach Knights. I wonder if he was wearing a sweater vest. This one's coming right here at the scoring table. Great hands by Adam Giardino. We'll stay with the Black Knights. Crimson showing a little bit of a double team right there. Mixing just, it up. Just caught a glimpse of, uh, of Adam's hands. Don't worry, Adam. Camera loves you. Johnson short, but he's fouled. And Abe Johnson back into the game with three fouls. will go to the line. Not the worst player in the world to foul. He's only a 55% shooter from Harvard's perspective. Yeah. Got him right there on the arm, just, just a little bit. Wasn't quite vertical in the 55 Wojcik. Good call. 
Look at 54 Johnson though, that guy is huge. See if he can knock down these free throws and extend this Army lead. Can't get the roll. Johnson's parents were in the Peace Corps. He came to basketball late, really has worked his way up through his four years. Didn't play in the 2020-21 campaign, but somebody who gives the Black Knights a ton of energy and, as we've seen tonight, the physicality. Five points tonight for Johnson to go along with 13 rebounds. Five-point Army lead, 9.41 to go. And that rebound advantage has been immense tonight for the cadets. No question. And I think if you just look at all hustle plays and offensive rebounds as part of it, Army has gotten the better of the Crimson. Chisama Para, Army wanted to travel, and instead they get called for a foul. And that'll be on Allen Spock, or excuse me, Johnson. So that's his fourth. Akpara playing with four fouls. And Allen Spot popping up off the bench. Looks like he's going to come in to replace Johnson. Good job by Akpara getting to his spot, using his pivots to create an angle around the bigger 54 Johnson. Akpara, 64% free throw shooter, but Harvard only 6 of 13 there for the night. And Chisam one for two. Harvard hasn't led since the early minutes of this second half. They led by one at that point. They were down by one at halftime. Scovins, the baby hook over PJ. Offensive rebound, yet another one. It's the 15th for the Black Knights compared to just two for Harvard. Here goes Barker, runs into traffic. Out to Haley on the drive. Six to shoot. Scovins, Haley gets it again, spins around the three. It's short, rebounded by Akpara. And that's exactly what we were talking about. Even though they didn't convert, it was another defensive possession that Harvard had to play. Nesbitt a three, he's got it. One point game. Three Nesbitt coming up big right now. I believe that's the second three of the game. Nice find right there by number two Mac in transition. The brother of former Harvard player Alex Nesbitt. Curry spinning in the lane. Kick out Scovins. Three is short. Lesmond the rebound. And after all the issues in this second half, Harvard can take the lead with a basket. Lesmond a three. Army still in front at the moment. 8-1 Harvard run. Curry, too strong. Allen Spock the rebound. Curry thought about it. Army shooting 27% from three. Allen Spock blocked. Here comes Mack. In traffic, Mack for two, and Harvard's in front again. Great drive and looking off the defense with his eyes. Number two, Mack there. Looked off as if he was going to pass and then finish at the rim. And then Mack commits the foul on the other end. So Army will go to the free throw line, but Malik Mack giving Harvard back the lead. And Nesbitt in on the act as well. We opened up tonight talking about how young these teams are, and you can tell young not only in terms of the classes, but in terms of experience. These are squads that didn't return a whole heck of a lot from last year. No, you can see the numbers right there. They lost a ton across the board. And again, uh, you know, I think the Crimson have gotten off to a pretty good start with all that being said. And I think we both agree that this Army Black Knight team is much better than their record would indicate. Uh, but you know, anytime that you lose a lot, it is a rebuilding year technically. And it's a long year and it's a journey. You gotta just 
take it day by day, stack good day on good day, and that's how you get better and improve as a program. Kendall Haley at the free throw line. He's had a career night in his young college career. Six points for Haley. He is four for five at the free throw line this evening after Malik Mack was whistled for the foul before the timeout. That was just Mack's second. And Haley up to seven points. And Harvard, after retaking the lead, now down by one. That ended a 6-0 spurt and a 10-1 run for the Crimson. Chandler P.J., he's blocked by Scovins, but a foul. Greensboro, North Carolina native, whistled for his third. And Chandler P.J. going to the free throw line. Strong drive, but I tell you what, pretty good defense right there by number four, Scovins. Um, looked like it was pretty clean. Maybe got him a little bit down low, but didn't see much. Chandler P.J., they had a great game in the first road game of the season playing in his hometown at Rice. He scored a career-high 23 points, but the type of player that he'll do basically whatever Tommy Emmerker asks him to do, whether it's, okay, go out and be a scorer, go out and be a defender, go out and do this specific task. Seemingly, he'll do everything, and it's a sign of great maturity from the sophomore. No question. He, he's a winner. I mean, that's everything you described right there about a player is, is what a winner is, and that's him. Harvard back in front by a point. Haley in traffic, slips it, Scovins too strong in the shot and out of bounds off Allen Spock. Harvard basketball. Looking to extend their lead. Haven't led by much here at times in this second half. We talked about the personal fouls, looks like that's evened out a little bit. Akpara will draw one. See, this will be the second straight on Scovins. And it will be on Ryan Curry. That'll be his second, but free throws here for Chisam Akpar. And both of these teams are going to be living at the line over the final six plus minutes. Chisam Akpara at the free throw line tonight is three of five, up to a dozen points. been so critical for Harvard to have his production in the last couple of games, especially with off nights from Malik Mack, who scored 10 points, his season low on Saturday. He's got 10 points 
here tonight. Yeah, Cheesum is definitely an X factor for this program. It can help win a lot of games. Curry nails the three. We're tied. Once again, Army with the big answer. Number two, Curry. Nesbitt fell down. Curry said, I'll take the open shot. Here goes back, and he'll go to the free throw line. Working on TJ Small. Love that drive and decision by number two, Mac. Like, let's, let's get you to the rim. We're in the double bonus now. Let's put pressure on this defense. Draw some contact, force the officials to make a call. Great decision by the young fellow. What's Mack. wild about Mac, he's not only the top scoring first year or freshman in the country, he's the only freshman or sophomore in the top 40 in the country in scoring. And if you go, who is the number two scoring freshman, you have to go all the way down to number 121 on the nation's list, and that's a player named Isaiah Collier for USC. Yeah, regardless of class, he's been playing elite level basketball for the majority of the season. Four consecutive Ivy League Rookie of the Week awards. Here's the drive by Haley. He tries to flip that over Akpara. This is volleyball down, but into the hands of Nesbitt. Did a couple of big threes. Harvard by two. Lesmond in the corner. Knocked into the hands of P.J. Lesmond thought about it. Drives, kicks, and then Mack will calm things down. How about that maturity? Knew he had time on the shot clock. Nesbitt blocked. Oh, what a job by Haley, but he came down on the sideline. And the question is, did he ever have possession? Probably not because of where he comes down here. So only three seconds for Harvard to shoot it. It'll be interesting to see the call here. I mean, he did have it. But I agree with you. I think it'll just be three seconds on the clock, and the ruling will be no possession was created. Yeah, they won't adjust the clock here. P.J. Gives it back, Akpara, and he took too long. So Harvard not aware fully that the shot clock didn't reset. I think they knew. I think he knew. Just over dribbled a little bit. Maybe it was like that one second earlier in the first half that went in about 0.2 seconds. <laughs> yes. That was a short three seconds. Well, at least they're being consistent, right? That's right. That's Army, right. it was their expense. The shot clock went out in the first half. Curry, step back, a long two, and boy, Ryan Curry is feeling himself. He's into double figures, and we're tied again. A tough shot, big time move, big time play right there by number two. Really impressed with his game. Mack slips past the defender with contact, doesn't score. Scovins, hounded by Lesmond. Allen Spock. Driving on Akpara. He's got to be careful with the four fouls, and Alan Spock knew it. Army back in front. Nice jump stop. Little forearm shimmy bump by 55. Alan Spock right there. Good finish. His father was a basketball player at Clemson about 20, 25 years ago. As Akpara takes a spill, he gets fouled. And that will be on A.J. Allen Spock, his second personal. Another easy call there by the official. And again, I, I think this is the game plan if you're Harvard. you got to keep attacking the paint, attacking the rim, just like number 10 Akpar did there, just like number 2 Mack did the possession before, even though he did not get the foul. It's the right idea. Double bonus, get to the rim. Akpar trying to draw the Crimson even again. And he's up to 14 points. Harvard bringing back on Denim Wojcik. And looks like they want to bring on Thomas Batiste at the next opportunity. Batiste, he's got four fouls, as does Akpara. And we are level 59-59. Akpara will take a seat. 
What a game tonight at Levides Pavilion with four and a half to go. Crimson in a zone right now, showing a little 2-3 look. Got to get to the shooters if you're Harvard. Nothing wide open for number two, nothing wide open for number 35, Smalls, who's been on fire. Smalls, 20 points, matches the most that any Army player has had in the game this season. He's got it. Five to shoot. Curry dribbling in the corner, hoists one up, and he did not get it off in time. Shot clock violation in the Harvard defense with a big stop in a tie game. 3.58 to go. And we have got a battle tonight at Levides Pavilion. Game in the balance. Conclusion when we come back. This is an epic, action-packed, adventure-filled story of Athletic Brewing's revolutionary non-alcoholic beer and the founders behind it. I'm Bill. And I'm John. You see, this is no ordinary non-alcoholic beer. These are great tasting brews that are fit for all times. And they all started with a crazy idea. Why can't there just be an amazing non-alcoholic beer that wouldn't affect me the next day? And one that actually tasted great? Oh, wow. That's a great idea. And there you have it. Just two totally delusional people. <laughs> Welcome to the community. We want to introduce ourselves to you. We're a not-for-profit financial cooperative founded and operated by Harvard employees. If you work or study at Harvard or any of the teaching hospitals, you and your family are eligible to join. We've helped thousands in the community buy their first homes, pay off their student loans, and build strong credit. Ask your friends and colleagues why the bank of HUBC. And get to know us at huecu.org slash hello. Well, West Point has produced so many amazing leaders and not just purely military. You see a couple of well-known astronauts on that list, a couple of former presidents, current Secretary of Defense, but uh, Krzyzewski, and how about uh, the supposed inventor of the game of baseball, Abner Doubleday. That was one of the more surprising ones when we were uh, cooking up this group. An impressive list. I, tell you, I mean, if you think about both of these institutions in front of us right now, between Harvard and Army, like the list of amazing people that these universities have produced that go on to literally change the country and the world. It's incredible. A lot of brand power in the gym tonight. Tie game 59 apiece with Donnie Guarinoni and Adam Giardino. Alex Vispoli here with you as Harvard and Army are deadlocked. Chisamak Para been playing through four fouls. Here's Malik Mack, kick out, Wojcik, extra pass, Lesmond, corner three, short, rebounded by Haley. Good look there, gotta get a stop now if you're Harvard and Army, just keep running your offense. Look to penetrate and kick, it's been working all night long. Haley's played a competent game. Slender freshman from Los Angeles. Curry has been terrific as well. Eight of his 10 coming in the second half. Lesmond pokes it away. Curry gets it back. Lesmond loses his feet. Curry whips it underneath. Scovins finishes after the pre-feed. Nice find by number two, Curry there. Again, getting into the paint and making plays. He's been working all night. Lofted P.J. off the window, and he gets the roll. Chandler P.J., as Tommy Enneker calls a timeout, re-levels this game at 61. P.J. down there like a 6'9 post player, sealing for angles. I'm not sure exactly why if your Army would want to front that, but they did, and Harvard found him and threw it right over the top for an uncontested layup. P.J. playing a little bit bigger than that 6'5 frame would suggest. On one end after the beautiful feed, and that Army bench was charged up. 
This game has gone back and forth. Each team has led five times. There have been nine ties in this game. And someone's looking to break it here with under three minutes to go. Army trying to win for the third consecutive game. Harvard trying to avoid a two-game losing streak. This is the start of a four-game homestand for the Crimson. So often in recent years, it feels like Harvard is on the road for nearly two months at a time at, at this part of the year. Not so this year. Yeah, nice change. You see what defense right now Harvard comes out with. Looks like to be a man-to-man. -man. They're matching up. And no, they showed man, and now they've dropped into a 2-3 zone. Again, it's been working for them. Let's see if they can get another stop. Haley gets it back from Curry. Scovins. Curry, left wing three, no. And a foul called. I think this will go against potentially Akpara. No, oh. calling it on number four. He called it on Scovins. So that's Scovins score. Josh Scovins trying to plead his case to Tommy Deneen to no avail so his fourth will send Akpar to the free throw line. He looked so guilty after the whistle blew he thought he was going to be done for the day <laughs> sitting on four fouls. Yeah, Sometimes it's hard to tell right when everyone's crashing the glass and bodies are flying but I tell you what great job by Harvard rebounding out of the zone and one guy that stood out was number 55 Wojcik got his nose in there to come up with it. But I, I love the decision by Coach Amaker there to come out, show man, you know, get Army to maybe call a man play and then quickly drop into that 2-3 zone, just trying to disrupt the rhythm of Army. Abe Johnson, who's been effective tonight but also has four fouls, comes back into the game. So Kevin Kuick says, I can't wait any longer for my energy big to get back out there. And Akpara has been dynamite at the free throw line tonight, 8 of 10. Harvard by two. Back in the zone. Army trying to find a way through. An open three for Small. What a battle there. Wojcik took a huge hit from his teammate. And he is in a ton of pain. I'll tell you what, number 10, Akpar, that's not the guy you want to get hit by when uh, crashing the glass, but Wojcik is extremely tough. He's going to be fine, but yeah, if, you're, if, you're Coach Am if you're Coach Amaker, you love seeing that. I mean, it's guys going after the ball, trying to win this game, and there you go. Did go down awkwardly. Fortunate that it didn't hurt anything more seriously. Akpar, 6'8", a chiseled 225. Denim Wojcik. Shook off the pain. Harvard trying to build on a two-point lead. Leads have been slim for both teams in this one. Harvard has led by as many as seven. Army led briefly for ten. Is was a great box out by Louis Lesmond to make sure that Kendall Haley didn't get to that basketball. And Lesmond coming up close and personal with you, Donnie. Yeah, right in my uh, right in my lap there. It's a, a great job boxing out. No foul on that. Mack facing a double team. PJ kick out. Lesmond looking for his first points in the second half, and they don't come there. Great look, great offense right there. Great find on the short roll by PJ kicking it out. A minute and a half to go. Army looking to come back. Shot clock down to seven. Curry blocked. Wojcik gets it for the Crimson. The terrific job by Louis Lesmond coming in, chasing down the drive and getting the block from behind. Tommy Amaker says, slow things down to his first year point guard Malik Mack. He's had 12 points tonight. Going 1-4 flat right now, iso ball. Leading score in the Ivy League for three! 
I tell you what, the confidence of Coach Amaker that has in this kid, and well-deserved to go 1-4 flat down the stretch, and Mr. Mack delivers. 15 for Malik Mack. Harvard by five. Scovins too strong on the answer. Offensive rebound. And then falling down with it was small, and he's called for the travel. The right call, uh, hopefully, is not an injury, and I think it looks like a cramp. They're pulling their, his toe back. TJ Small grabbed the offensive rebound. The 17th tonight for Army, but yeah, you see the look of anguish on his face. Definitely just a muscle cramp. You can see that calf locked up on him and in a ball. <laughs> Unfortunate break right there by Army. Great job by 35 Smalls to chase that rebound down, but going down to the floor, the right call by the official travel. Cadets are going to have to foul here, though. Down by two possessions with 32 seconds to go. I think they might show a trap. One trap first and try to get one out of it. Too late now, they'll have to foul. Lesmond, a lot of time ticking away. Can't get the foul off. Mack gets it, loses it, near tie-up. Still Harvard possession. And Kevin Kulik was imploring for a foul. He finally gets one. But half that timer came off on that possession. Harvard couldn't have drawn it up any better. Yeah, too much time for sure. I, I'm guessing Coach Kulik wanted some type of trap, one and done, trying to get a steal. But once they got it out of the trap, you have to foul right away. Good job by Mack holding that pivot foot and avoiding the travel. Close to a jump ball, though. I think that might have been what Coach Kuick was also uh, kind of uh, talking to the refs about. But, again, way too much time coming off the clock. Louis Lesmond has not been to the free throw line often this season. These are just his fifth and sixth attempts. Four for five at the line this year. And Kevin Kuick takes his penultimate timeout. So Harvard up by six. And a big free throw coming up here to potentially turn this into a three possession game. Told you Harvard uh, at home, but let's take a look at the Black Knights schedule. They will be back home against Stony Brook on Sunday. That's the 17th of December. They'll have more than a week off before going on the road to San Antonio and then coming back home to face the United States Merchant Marine Academy. And then it's the start of Patriot League play. It's a Wednesday-Saturday cadence in the Patriot League, so Lafayette on the road and then Holy Cross at home. For Harvard, continuation of their home slate, Holy Cross, Iona, and the University of Albany in the new year. For a tough way to start the Ivy League slate, Princeton on the 6th of January. Tigers look outstanding after their Sweet 16 run last year. No question. They are playing a high-level brand of basketball right now. Lesbon knocks them both down. Three-possession game. Curry. Sculvins back to Curry. Off-balance three. And Ryan Curry not giving up with 10 seconds to go. He's got 13 points. It's a four-point game. Exactly what you want if you're Army right there. Get it up the court quickly. Malik Mack probably overhelped off of number two Curry a little bit too much. Probably didn't want to let him get the ball back there. But again, he contested the shot and a great shot by number two. Four-point lead for Harvard. And Donnie, if this holds... You have to be impressed with the grit that Harvard has shown down by 10 points in this second half. Army seemingly having all the answers, but when this game was tied at 59, Harvard found a way to take it and hold on. No question. I, I thought there's some adjustments that were made by Coach Amaker and his staff to use the zone here and there, the 2-3 zone that I think disrupted the rhythm of the Army team. And then I also think just... You could tell they were trying to get to the rim, whether it was feed it down low to Chisamakpar, number 10, or uh, PJ, uh, or just, uh, you know, 
post up or drive to the basket. That was something they wanted to do, and I think it really made a difference in the game. And the second half emergence of that man, a big reason why Harvard has the lead. You think back to the three that he was fouled on. And look at where he is in the Ivy League. Top four in not only scoring, assists, three-point percentage, three-pointers made, free throws. It's a guy who is still in a month plus in his college basketball career, and he'll be going to the free throw line after the quick foul. Yeah, Harvey, no time left, half a foul right away, no time for a trap. All you can do is try to get a five-second call or foul as soon as the ball is inbounded. That's the third on T.J. Small, who's had a career night with 20 points. But Army is going to need a bit of good fortune here with no more timeouts, trailing by four. And only 8.6 seconds to go. And they're wishing that Malik Mack was shooting at the free throw line the way he did in the first half. He was two of six in the first half from the free throw line. But in this second half, he's been perfect. Four yeah, for four. Just a testament to his toughness. I mean, he just steps up and makes big plays when they count. He stays perfect. 17 points. Curry hit a three a moment ago, trying to do it again, but not this time. Rebound, fall away shot. Allen Spock and Harvard comes from behind to knock off a game army squad 70-64 to start this homestand. Tell you what, a great game for different reasons.